Hello everyone. SQL Server 2012 introduced a number of new T-SQL enhancements. Today I'll go over some of the main enhancements that were made. I'll start with the sequence object. This object is used to generate a sequence of numeric numbers, kind of like the identity field. But the sequence object allows you to do more. You can specify how you want the numbers to increment. This object is table independent, so you can use it across multiple tables. Let's go through an example. To create the sequence object, use create sequence and then the object name. Here, I'm um, telling it to start with the number one and increment it by one. You can use sys.sequences to view all your sequence objects, and you could also see how they're set up. So here we have the sequence object that I just created and we see that we're starting at the value 1 and incrementing it by 1. To get the sequence number, use select next value for the sequence. So for this one, when I execute it, it will start with a 1 and each time I execute it, it will go up by 1. Looking at sys sequences, I'll see now that the current value is at 7. There are other options you can set. The first one here is to just reset the starting value to a 2. This time let's increment it by 2 and we can also specify a minimum and max value. Here I'll specify a minimum value of 2 and a maximum of 10. Now when we execute for next value for the sequence, it will start with a 2 and go up by 2 each time I execute. Now once it reaches the maximum, if I try to retrieve the next sequence number, I'll receive an error because 10 is my set maximum. I can tell it to cycle through though, so when it reaches 10, the next time I select from it, it'll start again from my specified start value, which is a 2. So I could do that with the cycle keyword. Now when I execute this, and when it reaches 10, the next time I execute it, it will start back at 2. You can use this sequence object to help populate a table. I'll create a test table here. and use the sequence object to populate the sequence number field. Insert a couple of rows and we could view the table and see that our sequence number is used to generate this column. And to drop the sequence just use drop sequence and then the object. SQL 2012 also introduced a couple of logical functions called choose and if. You can use the choose function to select a value from a list of values at a specified index. Here I have a list of names, Peter, Paul, Mary, and I'm telling it to return the second value from the list, which is Paul. So when I execute this, my result should be Paul. The other logical function is the IIF function, or the inline if. This function evaluates a Boolean expression. If the expression is true, the first value is returned. If the expression is false, then it returns the second value. Here I have my Boolean expression as 1 equals 2, which is false, so the second value should be returned. There are some new date and time functions in this version. The first six constructs and returns a date value based on the date and time parts that you pass into it. So for date from parts, if you pass in the year, month, and day, it will return the date value. Here are some of examples. Here I'm passing in my year, month, and day 
and it'll return the date for that. For date time from parts, I need to pass in the year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, and milliseconds, and it'll return a date time value for that. There's also another function here, the last one, EO month. This one returns the last day of the month. It also accepts an optional parameter, month to add. Here's an example. So here we have a date of August 22nd. And if we execute this, we see that the end of month for August is August 31st. And here we could add in the extra optional parameter too to get the month, the end of the month, two months from now, which is October 31st. Or we could put in a negative value to get previous months. Here I'm getting the end of the month for the previous month, which is July 31st. Another new enhancement is the offset and fetch commands. This lets you fetch a page of results from your result set. You can use the offset clause to tell it how many rows you want to skip before it starts returning results. And you could use the fetch clause to specify how many rows to return after the fetch. If I select everything from the product table, it returns 504 rows. But say I want to ignore the first 10 rows and only see results for product 322 and on. I can use the offset 10 rows to accomplish that. So the first 10 rows are ignored. Now let's say I don't want all the results after the 10th row. I only want the next 25 rows. I can use the fetch next 25 rows only to accomplish that. So now only 25 rows are returned. This is from records 11 through 25. There is also a number of new window functions introduced in 2012. I have a brief description of what each of these functions do, but they're best explained using examples. I'll go over the first four first. First, I'll create my test table along with some sample data. This test table contains the sales date, the customer it was sold to, and the sales price. So this first query will show how these four functions are used. The first value, last value, lag, and lead. First value returns the first value in your order set of values. Last value returns the last value in the order set of values. Lag returns the value of the previous row in your order set. And lead returns the value of the next row in your order set. So let's see how this looks. For the first value function, I'm ordering by the sales price for each customer. So for customer 395, I see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 records for this customer. And 17 is its lowest sale price. So if I order by sale price for this customer ID, its first value is this record here for February 11th. So under date of lowest sale, I have February 11th for each one of those customer records for customer 395. For the last value function, I'm also ordering by sale price for each customer. So it'll return the highest sale for that customer. So again, using customer 395, we see that his highest sale 
is here on April 26th. So under date of high sale for, for customer 395, it will show April 26th for each of his record. The lag function, this one returns the value of the previous row in the order set. For this, I'm ordering by sales date for each customer. For customer 395, this record is his first sale, so there is no previous sale date. That's why this is null. His next sale is on February 11th, and his previous sale date is January 3rd, which is this first record, and so on. The next record for him is April 26th, and his previous sale date is February 11th. And the same idea for the lead function, just the other way around. Instead of returning the value for the previous row, it returns the value for the next row. Again, using customer 395. For his first sale record on January 3rd, his next sale date is going to be February 11th. And then for February 11th, his next sale date, April 26th. April 26th, next sale date is May 18th. And on May 18th, this is his last sale date, so under next sale date, it just shows null, since there's nothing after that. Okay, moving on to the next four window functions. The QMDIST, percent rank, percentile count, and percentile disk. The QMDISC and percentile rank are very similar functions. QMDISC calculates the cumulative distribution of a value in a group of values. It takes the number of rows that have a value less than or equal to the current value and divides it by the total number of rows in its partition. For percent rank, it gives the rank of a row relative to all the rows in the partition. For these functions, both of them, they return a value from 0 to 1. For QMDIST, I'm ordering it by the sale price for each customer. For customer 395, since we're ordering it by sale price, this one, this record is his lowest sale, and it has a cumulative distribution of 0.25. His next highest sale is 81 with a distribution of 0.5. Next highest one is 114 with a distribution of 0.75. And his highest sale is 192, which has a distribution of 1. For percent rank, its rank starts at 0 for the lowest value. So lowest value is 17 and has a percent rank of 0. The next one is 0.33, then 0.66 and its highest value at 1. And that's just the distribution of each of these sale values for this customer ID. The next two window functions are also very similar. The percentile count and the percentile disk. For percentile count, it calculates the percentile based on a continuous distribution of the column's value. This calculated result is interpolated, so it might not be equal to any of the values in the column. The percentile disk returns the smallest QMDIST value that's either greater than or equal to a specified percentage. Basically, for both of these functions, you pass in a percentile parameter to them. In my case, I'm going to pass in 0.5. So you pass in this percentile value to them, and they return a value of the role that's at or near that percentile. The difference between them is with percentile disk, you always have a value that exists in the column because it returns the smallest QMDIST value that's greater than or equal to your percentile parameter. With percentile count, the value is interpolated based on the percentile parameter. So the result may or may not be a value in the column. For both of these functions, the percentile parameter I'm using is 0.5 which is the midpoint of the distribution. 
So for customer 395, we know that he has four records with a sale price of 17, 81, 114, and 192. The percentile count with a percentile parameter of 0.5 will be between the middle two values of 81 and 114, which calculates to 97.5. The percentile disk returns the smallest cum disk value that's greater than or equal to that percentile parameter of 0 0.05. For customer 395, it happens to have a cum disk of 0.5, so it will return a value of 81. Let's look at another customer. customer 100. This customer has three records with a sale price of 20, 33, and 45. There's only three values and 33 is the middle value. So his percentile count at 0.5 is going to be 33. His percentile disk at 0.5 is going to be the smallest cum disk value that's greater than or equal to 0.5. His cum disk goes from 0.33 to 0.66, which is the smallest value greater than 0.5. So it will return this value 33 for percentile disk. So that's some of the main T-SQL enhancements made in SQL Server 2012. The queries that I've used in this video, I'll post them on my blog and I'll have a link to it in the video description. Thanks for watching.